Hey Moz fans, welcome to another edition of Whiteboard Friday. Today we're going to be uncovering understanding and fulfilling search intent. And this is a really important topic to understand and better prepare your content around. And so I want you to think about, you know, this idea that Google houses the world's information. They very likely know what majority of people searching X are seeking, right? And they're going to continue to get better and better and better at that. And so what I would suggest you do and what you arm yourself with is this idea of really leaning on Google to better understand the intent behind any given search. And so you're probably very familiar about of the informational, navigational, investigational, transactional related intent types, right? And you can pull this information, like I said, directly off the SERP. Is there a featured snippet? Is uh, there a knowledge graph? Like, you know, you can pull that sort of information. Are there site links? Is it navigational in nature? People just trying to go to one destination. Is there comparison tables? Are they perhaps investigating? Uh, transactional, right? Are there tons of ads? Are there lots of product pages showing up in results? Is there a shopping carousel? You can pull intent types directly from the search. And what's interesting though is any given SERP doesn't necessarily have one intent type. In fact, it likely has, you know, a couple and nitty gritty intent types that Google themselves haven't quite totally figured out. And so I just want to kind of, you know, pull back the curtain on Google is actively trying to get better at understanding intent within questions and answers within content. And so they put up a competition to a bunch of data scientists to determine, you know, if anyone could build a model that can accurately weight these various intents with the content. So there's question information that they wanted the model to predict around, you know, is this fact seeking? Uh, does it have multi intent? Is it not really a question? It's my favorite. Um, is it well written? Right. And then they're also trying to understand the type of question. Is it a definition? Is it instructions? Spelling, which is most of my searches. Um, and then they get into answer information. Is the answer intent helpful? Uh, is it plausible? Is it relevant? Does it satisfy the question? And they even drill a bit deeper into answer types. Is it instructions, procedure, well written? Again, you see these sort of themes occur. So it's important. It's not just these four. It's great to, you know, know these and sort of run with them a bit, but put these in your back pocket and know that it goes a lot deeper and it's a lot more complicated than that, right? Okay, so let's dig in to this checklist of sorts. And the idea behind this is that uh, there's a Google Sheet that you can have today, make a copy and tweak however you'd like that walks you through really this first process of understanding the intent and then fulfilling it. And once you do this a couple of times, you're not going to need this checklist. This will become second nature to you. So let's just walk through what this looks like. Uh, so first, you know, what is the primary SERP intent? And so for my example, I have phonetic alphabet, informational, secondary intent might be investigational for the types of content people are looking for. I list the SERP features that I notice in the search results. Um, and I'm really just making mental notes of what I'm seeing. So for this particular SERP, there were a lot more visuals than I expected. And so I made note of that. That kind of surprised me. I also made note, you know, this is the order of the features that are showing up. Uh, the next thing you do is to read and consume all of the ranking URLs. This is so, so important if you're serious about ranking for a particular keyword. You should actively be consuming this content and making notes 
about topics and entities covered. What sort of multimedia are they using? How, what are the layouts? What does it feel like? You can really start to have a better checklist of what, what does that content look like, right? What are those expectations? And then, ooh, my favorite secret hack is to activate Mozbar for the search result page. And you can see the domain authority and the backlinks for every single URL on a SERP. A lot of people don't know you can use Mozbar directly within Google search results and it's fantastic. And so what I use this for, if I wanna rank for something like this, I would just evaluate all of the organic DAs and I would really evaluate that range and see if the website or my client's website might be competitive with it. If they're not even close, maybe I pivot this and I try to target something more appropriate for them to rank for in the short term, right? Uh, now the fulfill part, right? Are you fulfilling this intent? What is the page goal? Every page should have a goal. Um, outline scannable framework. And I wanna just briefly explain what I mean by this. So scannable content is so, so important. Pe more and more people are on mobile. Our attention span is getting shorter and shorter. Uh, you know, this idea that you should generate multiple title ideas to come up with the best one, but then use the others for social media. Shout out to Andy Crestedino who came up with that, which I love. Use the inverted pyramid, right? Use the journalistic style where you tell people the most important information at the top. Uh, make sure you have succinct summaries, right? Omit needless words, whether that be at the top or at the bottom of your content. So important to have. Google loves pulling that information for things like featured snippets. Um, make sure you have scannable subtitles. Copy Blogger does this beautifully where you can just scan one of their articles and you quickly understand what, what the content is about like that. Um, that's incredibly helpful for users. Uh, leverage multimedia, right? There's no reason why you couldn't also take a piece of content you're working on and provide other options, other forms for your visitors to consume it. We don't know what any given visitor might be or the position they're in to consume content that time. Maybe they're going for a walk and they wanna hear audio. You know, it's, it's really great to provide different media types. And then lastly, I have this here and here, are, are you providing relevant next steps? And so I really thought about this for someone searching phonetic alphabet that are looking for information what might be relevant next steps? It sounds like they're sort of in a learning mode. So why not quiz them on it? Why not entice them to learn more about aviation uh, jargon and language? Um, you can start to like put yourself in the mindset of the user and really try to cultivate logical next steps for someone to go through on your site. So really building out that supportive content. And then lastly, make sure you have a CTA, right? And hopefully it's to fulfill the page goal that you set for yourself. But ideally this is really, you know, this should become second nature after a couple passes where you just have these kind of mental checks in your head and you can quickly and better evaluate search result pages to target and rank and succeed in search. So. Really look forward to hearing your thoughts and your comments down below. And thank you so much for joining me on this edition of Whiteboard Friday. I will see you all soon. <laughs> Thanks.